In today's video we are gonna take a look to the Indie Droid Nova. This device is very similar to the Raspberry Pi or the Orange Pi. We can install Linux or Android in this little device and this is what we call an SBC, a single board computer, because all the components, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, are inside this little board. So we can do a lot of projects with this little thing. This is the Indie Droid Nova. This has the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi 4, so most of the accessories are gonna be compatible. And we have a micro SD card slot, so you can install an operating system in the micro SD card. But we also have an EMMC connector, so you can use EMMC storage for that. We have a USB Type C for power, mini HDMI, and a USB Type C for video output. Also, we have a jack connector. This is the 16 GB models, and also we have the ROG Chip 3588 CPU, two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, and a gigabit connector for the Ethernet port. And this is how it looks when you connect to an external monitor. Also, as I commented, we can install the operating system into the EMMC instead of the micro SD card. This type of storage is faster than the micro SD card and has better performance, so you can buy it in Aliexpress or in Amazon for example and place it in the Nova but I want to show you that you need a special adapter to connect this type of storage to the computer this is the adapter this is an USB to EMMC so you just need to place the little memory in this connector be careful you don't need to press with a lot of force so just put it in the right place and press a little bit but just a little bit you can buy this type of adapter with the indie droid nova in the official amity droid page so check this accessory because it is very important now i will show you how to install linux and android to flash the nova we have to use a couple of applications so the first thing we have to do is download these two applications the first one is driver assistant this is a windows driver and the second one is the dev tools we are going to use to flash android images so after download both files, we have to uncompress them and you will find these two folders. The first one is the driver assistant, just click on driver install and click on install driver. After this, we can go to the second folder and here we need first to change the language because by default this tool is in Chinese. So if we modify the config.ini file, you can open it with the notepad or with Visual Studio Code. We can see that by default this is set to 1, so we just need to set it to 2 and save. Because as you can see here, 2 is for English, 1 is for Chinese. So just modify this and you can open the program and you will see it is in English. So apart from that, I recommend you downloading Balena Etcher. This tool is to flash the Linux images directly to the SD card or the EMMC. So just download your version, for example Windows. 64 bits and install it as any other program. After we have all the tools, we have to download the operative system we want to flash into the Nova. So let's go to the official page, downloads, and here we can see different things. For example, we have Linux uh, images. So, for example, if you want Debian or Ubuntu, this is the one most recommended. So, I recommend you taking a look at them. Just click on this icon and you will download the operating system. If you want to download Android, you can go down and you will see the Android section here. And I recommend you checking the different versions, but for this test, I'm gonna use this one because I tried both and this one seems to have better resolution in my monitor. So just, I recommend you checking just both and trying the one that you prefer. So just click on the link and download from Google Drive. When we download the operating system, we have to uncompress them because by default they are in a format that is .amg.xz. So we have to uncompress the files by right clicking and uncompressing, for example, with 70. And you will see just a .amg image. Remember that to flash Linux, we can use Balena Etcher, and to flash Android, we have to use the dev tool from Radar. If we want to flash Linux, the process is exactly the same with the EMMC and the micro SD card. So we have to connect the device, the micro SD card or the EMMC, to your computer. And after that, we are going to open Balena Etcher. Once it is open, we have to select the Ambient or the Linux image you downloaded from the official page image. 
So just click on it. Remember that you have to uncompress the file you download and you have to select the .img one. And here we have to select the emmc or the micro SD card. So in my case, I'm gonna flash the emmc, but you can do it with your micro SD card without any problem. Just click on flash, accept all the messages you see, and wait until the process finishes without touching anything. You might see if you are flashing a micro SD card or the EMC as you can see this window, but don't do nothing, just go to Valena and wait until the process finishes here. And when it says complete, then you can take your EMMC and connect it to your Nova. As you can see, after some time, the process finishes and we can just take the EMMC and connect it to the Nova. So we're going to do this and I will show you the screen. The first time you boot into Armbian, I recommend you having an Ethernet cable connected to the SBC. Here we have to create the password for the root user and here you can select the shell. In my case, I prefer CSH, so I will select the second option. Provide a username and a password. Now you can see that the location is recognized because we have internet connection. So type Y and select the language. Now you can see that we are in the main page of Armbian. This is the operating system. And here you can select the different options for the connectivity. We have Bluetooth and we should have Wi-Fi, but I'm not sure why it is not recognized right now that it says no Wi-Fi adapter. So I'm not sure what's happening here. I will ask in the official Discord, but I will try to post you the solution for this. Now the first thing we have to do with Arbian is updating and upgrading the packages. So let's open a terminal and let's run the following command. Remember to run it with sudo. Now let's reboot the system. And once it finishes rebooting, we're gonna start using our Linux environment. Let's do a quick test for the GPU. So let's install GearMark 2. And let's run the program. We can see that we are using Panfrost, which is the latest driver available. So we should have the best performance of the GPU with this Linux environment. But if you want to run some gaming, some emulation, I recommend you checking Android because Android can use Vulkan, but you cannot have Vulkan inside the Linux environment. And this is a very common issue in all the RK3588 CPUs. It's not just for this SBC, but for all the SBCs with this CPU. So let's close this and I will show you how to install some emulation. I like to do it with Flatpak, but you can do it with your repository as always. Now we are going to install a few packages, so let's install Flatpak. For this, let's open Chromium. Here you can look for Flatpak. And let's click on Get Setup. Here we can click on Ubuntu. And let's copy and paste all these commands. First, this one. Let's open a terminal, let's paste this, let's copy the following commands, let's continue with the commands. Finally we have to reboot the Nova and later we can go to this page which is FlatHub and here you will look for any software, for example PPSPP, this is a PSP emulator, you can open here, check that it is compatible with Arch64, this is ARM64 devices, so we need to see if this is compatible or not. And then we can just click here, copy this command into the terminal and we will install the package. But first we are going to restart the computer. Let's go to FlatHub. And let's look for any program. As I said, we are going to install the PSP emulator. Just deploy this, copy the command. Open a terminal, you can open it with Ctrl Alt T, Ctrl Shift B to paste this. When it finishes, we can now go to the menu. 
blue for PPS and SPP. And this is the PSP emulator. So as I said, we are in Linux, so we don't have Vulkan. We only have OpenGL. So probably we can just play at 2x resolution. But if we go to Android, I will show you later, we are going to be able to go to 4x or even 6x resolution with Vulkan. So I will prepare some tests. I will install also Line3DS, the 3DS emulator, and I will do some comparisons between Linux and Android. But apart from gaming, you can also install other softwares like Visual Studio Code. So here we have Visual Studio Code. We can see that it is available for ARM64. So just copy the command to install it, open a terminal, paste it, accept and wait. This device is very powerful, so you can basically program almost anything you want. Just remember that you are in an ARM CPU. You can set Docker here, you can deploy some containers, create a multimedia server, a torrent box or whatever. My idea is to do some videos about different projects like a VPN server, an emulation machine and things like that. So you can see all the potential that this type of device has. So please leave in the comments if you want some kind of project in particular. Now the process has finished and we can open Visual Studio Code. We have a fully functional Visual Studio, so you can program in any language you want, Python, JavaScript, or whatever. Now I want to show you how to install Android on the device. So first, let's go to the wiki, let's go to the user guide, and click on this link. This will open the user manual, and we are going to look for Mushroom. The Mushroom mode is the mode that we need to install Android. But this is very simple, so as we said, we need to install the driver that I showed at the beginning of the video and we are going to use the second program. Here you have the link, so you can download this and you just need to execute this tool. So this is the program, we are going to use just the second tab, this one. So here in firmware you can select the Android version that we downloaded from the official page. For example, let's use this one. Wait a few seconds and you will see here the information. After that, we can see the information. After that, we need to connect the device, the Nova, to the computer. For that, we have a couple of options. So let's open the user manual and here we have the instruction. Let's connect the Nova to the computer and then let's connect the Nova to the power adapter. If it is successful, you will see here mass from device, but as you see, we are not seeing that. So we are going to fix this because it's very common, just this doesn't work all the time. So if we continue reading, we have to press the boot and the reset button at the same time. If you don't know which buttons are those, we can go up until we see the schematics for the Nova here. So if we keep the heatsink, we have to press the reset button and the boot button at the same time. So let's do this. And if that didn't work, as in my case, we just need to continue reading and it says that we have to unplug the USB Type-C power, press both buttons and then connect the power again. So let's try this. So I recommend you trying all these steps a couple of times until you see that your device is found on Mushroom device. So now we are going to click on upgrade and this will flash the EMMC from the Nova and install Android automatically. You will see some message here, so let's wait a few seconds and you can see that we have the progress here. So when it finishes, we can disconnect the Nova from the computer and just connect it to an external monitor. So I will show you when it finishes. The process has finishes and now we can connect the Nova to the monitor. Now we are inside the Android image for the Nova. So let's do the usual installation. Here you can see that the Wi-Fi is working fine. You can escape everything until we are in the main screen. And as you can see, we have Google Play already installed, so we can log in on our Google account. Finally, we are inside the Android system, so let's check the Android version. And we are in Android version 13. As I said, we have the Google Play Store already installed, and it is working, so you can install any application that you want. So now we have the basic setup, for example, we have a, for example, we have a browser, you can use Chrome, but I like to use Kiwi because you can install extension in this browser. 
and let's download, for example, line 3ds. Let's open PBS SPP, for example. And if we go to the settings, we can see that we have Vulkan enabled. So probably we can set this to 4x resolution without any problem. Now, basically, we have everything set up. This is the Android system working perfectly. So I want to test a couple of applications to see the performance. So I will set up everything and I will show you now the comparison between Linux and Android. The first game we are going to see is called Senless Zone Zero. This is a game from the creators of Gaussian Impact and it can be played at medium graphics without any problem. I tried in high graphics but when I put it in high the game starts lagging so I think in medium is totally playable without any type of problem. I will leave a bit of gameplay here but you can move to the next section where we are gonna test PSP emulation in the Android system. Now we are going to test PSP emulation with the application PPSSPP from the Google Play Store. This application is free and you can download it directly from the Google Play Store as I said. And we are going to set this to 4x resolution. In 4x resolution it works perfectly without any problem. So after a few seconds of gameplay I will change the resolution to 6x. And we can see that the application still runs perfectly but the audio sometimes lags a bit. So I recommend probably setting this to 4x resolution or if the game is a bit lighter, you can set it to 6x resolution without any problem. As you can see, here we are in 2x resolution using OpenGL because Vulkan is not available in Linux. At 2x resolution, the game works perfectly. I'm playing with the keyboard, so maybe it's not the best, the best testing. If we set the resolution to 4x, we can see that the game runs at 50% of the performance. In line 3DS, although we can see here Vulkan, if we check the configuration, we can see that this is not Vulkan, this is CPU rendering. So if we go to graphics, we can see the internal resolution. If we go to advanced, we can see Vulkan, but this means that this is using the CPU instead of the GPU. So we are not using the GPU and we are not using Vulkan, but let's see if we are able to run at least this game. In the bottom part you can see the speed of the game and this is not playable at all. We are in the native resolution at 10 FPS and at 10-20% of the performance, so 3DS is not playable in Linux. But if you check the Android part, you can see that you can run this at 3x resolution because we have Vulkan. So I hope you liked the video, don't forget to share, like and subscribe and leave in the comments if you're interested in seeing any project in particular or any SBC in particular in this channel.